Imagine an ER waiting room with your favorite blanket and pillow, your cat's pixel and widget, and your mom's chicken soup. At Dignity Health, we know the only thing worse than being in pain is being stuck in an ER waiting room. So we offer in quicker. You get an estimated ER arrival time online so you can start your wait at home. It's just another way of putting leading edge medicine within easy reach. Learn more at strosehospitals.org slash ER. Dignity Health, including St. Rose Dominicans, Rose de Lima, San Martin, and Siena campuses in Henderson and Las Vegas. Hello, human kindness. Ditch the gas and start mowing, trimming, and blowing with Skill Power Core 40 volt battery powered outdoor power equipment. New and now available at Lowe's. The Power Core 40 mower with 25% longer runtime and industry leading charging times gets you back to work in just 15 minutes. Stop in or visit Lowe's.com and check them out during Lowe's Spring Fest going on now. Lowe's, home to any budget, home to any possibility. Battery charges from 0 to 30% in 15 minutes based on a 2.5 amp hour battery, US only. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Daily Drop number 270. Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell had quite the menagerie of friends. Bankers, academics, politicians, world leaders, business moguls, the creator and designer of the Segway? That's right, folks. Dean Kamen is another person that was close to Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell. In fact, not only was he close to Epstein and Maxwell, he was also close to Nadia Marchenko. And in tonight's article, we're going to explore that relationship a little bit. Our article tonight is from SeattlePI.com. The author of the article is Christine Negroni. Headline, Jeffrey Epstein, Dean Kamen, Connection Through Aviation Influencer. And obviously the aviation influencer is Nadia Marcinkova, or aka Nadia Marchinko, which she goes by now. Nadia Marchenko, a celebrity pilot whose adolescence was spent in the company of the now-dead pedophile Jeffrey Epstein and the now-incarcerated Ghislaine Maxwell, had a curiously close and previously undisclosed years-long relationship with Dean Kamen, inventor of the Segway. This is according to people familiar with her activities during her time in New Hampshire and public records. Well, isn't that a coincidence, huh? Dean Kamen was in New Hampshire. Nadia Marchenko was in New Hampshire. Where was Ghislaine Maxwell found? Oh, that's right. New Hampshire. These people, folks, I I don't understand how anyone could dispute the fact that this was a criminal conspiracy that was occurring. And all of these people, Nadia Marchenko, the Core Four, Ghislaine Maxwell, Jean-Luc Brunel, etc., etc., were engaging in a decades-long criminal enterprise. How that is not at the forefront of what's being talked about right now is beyond me. In 2008 and 2009, Epstein was locked up for the first time for engaging in sex with underage girls in Palm Beach, Florida. Marchenko, who lived with Epstein and was accused by survivors of of participating in some of the sexual assaults, spent the period of Epstein's incarceration visiting him in jail and learning to fly. Now, remember, Nadia Marchenko is said to have been sold to Jeffrey Epstein when she herself was a child, right? So I have said several times that she's the only one out of all of the core four that I would even be halfway comfortable with getting a lesser sentence, but only if she comes forward and completely cooperates and throws everybody else under the bus. Because as much as I have empathy for what occurred when she was a child, Jeffrey Epstein has been dead for quite some time and he's been incarcerated and she stayed loyal to him. And I understand the psychology behind it is it's very powerful, right? When somebody has that kind of hold over you, but I think that as far as the law is concerned, I, only, I think that that will only get her so far. 
because she's had ample time to come forward and provide crucial evidence to help the survivors along in their case, and she has not done so. So there has to be a point in time where you have to take some responsibility for your actions. And I think that Marcinkova, Mar- uh, Marchenko is at the point here, it's, she's on the precipice, right? She needs to come forward soon, or I think any sort of empathy or sympathy for her is going to slip away. She obtained her pilot's license and became a certified flight instructor. Two years later, she was, she was right seating in Epstein's private business jets. She talked about this in an interview posted to the website of First, a STEM education promoting organization founded by Kamen, who is a pilot himself and a prolific inventor. So again, we see the name Kamen come up and we see Marchenko having ties to the founder and creator of Segway. Now, these are ties that haven't been talked about too freely, right? Now, there's been rumblings. People have talked about it a little bit. But to to see it now coming out in, in Seattle PI, well, that's a whole different story. The 2013 article is one of the earliest public links between Marchenko and Cayman, and it is not clear whether the magazine profile, the only such feature in the short-lived publication, was what brought her to Cayman's attention, or if the feature was the result of an already existing relationship, but it would not be her last encounter with Cayman. And that is a pretty interesting question, right? Did they meet because of this shoot? Or did they know each other previously? Now, I'm going to speculate that they knew each other previously, considering that Epstein and um, Cayman had a relationship and so did Maxwell. So it's very feasible to me that they made the introduction here. These two uh, became friends and the rest is history. Later that year, Marchenko told me she was flying the Embraer Phenom 300, a multi-million dollar business jet. She did not say for whom she was flying, but it is worth noting that it, that it is the model aircraft owned by Dean Kamen's New Hampshire-based company, DECA, and just months later, she would have a private office just down the hall from Kamen's. Oh yeah, I'm sure there's nothing going on here. I mean, I am sure that these two were not close. I'm sure they had no relationship, business or otherwise, and that Nadia Marchenko just decided she was going to end up in New Hampshire because, you know, it's such a jumping spot. I hear that, they, you know, the nightlife is just cracking off. I mean, come on, really? It's obvious that she was drawn to New Hampshire because of her relationship with Cayman. And to be honest with you, I think a, a deeper dig is very necessary now to see what role Cayman might have played in bringing Ghislaine to New Hampshire. A former employee at DECA in Manchester remembers seeing Marchinko for the first time in early 2014. It was during a quarterly employee, employees meeting with Cayman announced, where Cayman announced exciting news. He was starting a company flying club. Then, praising the appearance of the attractive blonde standing beside him, he introduced Marchinko. The club flight instructor, yeah, you know, no nepotism here, had nothing to do with the relationship between Jeffrey Epstein and Cayman and the the introduction that was made. Nah, nothing to do with that at all. The ties are pretty deep here, folks. A lot deeper than people have been led to believe. And the fact, the thing that just really sticks in my gut for this whole entire... This whole entire situation, as far as Cayman goes, is the fact that he was based in New Hampshire. I just can't shake that Ghislaine Maxwell was also in New Hampshire when she got arrested. And I wonder just how deep these ties really run. Dean was really into flying. One of those present for the announcement said, This may have been behind his decision to give her an office on the executive floor where she could run the club. But that was not the only thing Marchenko was running from DECA headquarters. So she and she had a, a, a pretty tight relationship here at DECA, right? She had her own office in the executive wing. She was the head flight instructor of the flying club. And she was also very close to Mr. Kamen, obviously. As I have reported, 
As I have reported previously, Marchenko also used the company address as the headquarters for her website, Avaloop, which used videos and photos of attractive deal attendants to attract aspiring pilots. Visitors were encouraged to view the gorgeous women and enter to win a one-on-one video chat with fashion models with exciting backgrounds. One image included the caption, So what are you waiting for, Captain? And these videos are in the link. Make sure you come and check out the work here that's been done by Seattle PI. And uh, check out these videos as well. Absolutely weird, wacky, and odd. Marchenko's photos were posted, as were those of her friend Shannon Kuzak, who arrived at DECA around the same time to take a job as Kamen's chief of staff. Read into that what you will. Cusack's online resume, since altered, showed her job before arriving at DECA had been with Avaloop. Boy, it just gets deeper and deeper, huh? The rabbit hole. All of these people are connected and tied together. When you pull on one thread, another one pops up. And we've seen it over and over again in our investigation into this case. And we're seeing it again right here in front of our eyes. Obviously, Dean Kamen and Nadia Marchenko were very, very close. Close enough that one of Nadia Marchenko's old employees, friends, came over and also scored a job with DECA. Even with DECA co-workers helping Marchenko enhance the apparent size of her company, the people at DECA with whom I spoke say they were unaware at the time of Marchenko's sordid past as Epstein's unindicted co-conspirator in the sexual abuse of minors. And this is always the excuse, right? You don't Google your new boss or the new executive in the company and see where they came from before just out of curiosity. I know when I was working for a financial institute in New York, I I would do this. I mean, I did the same thing. Anytime someone new popped up, I'd take a look at who it was. And I find it hard to believe that that wasn't going on at DECA. I find it hard to believe that they had no idea that Marchenko was an unindicted co-conspirator of Jeffrey Epstein. Which is not to say she wasn't the subject of discussion. She was. It was widely believed that Marchenko was living in Cayman, Cayman suburban Manchester home. Public records indicate both Marchenko and Cusack lived for a time at his Bedford home. Well, that's kind of an odd arrangement, right? And look, I'm not, I'm not the kind of person to get involved in what, what anybody's doing in their bedroom, as long as it's done between consenting adults. But it's a little odd for three grown people to be living in a house like this when they're all rich, right? Was there something more there? Is the relationship deeper? Were they perhaps engaged in a thruple? I don't have evidence to prove any of that. That's just speculation. But I gotta think that there's more there if all three of them are living in this home together, considering they all have enough money to have their own places. This was an especially tantalizing conversational threat at the time, because Cayman already had a live-in girlfriend, DECA's former general counsel, Maureen Tui, who still represents DECA in legal and financial matters. So the plot thickens, huh? Four of them living in this house... Three ladies and Mr. Cayman himself. I wonder if he rode around on a Segway from each woman to each woman going from room to room. A frequent guest of presidents in May 2016, Cayman brought Tui on the date of a lifetime to a White House dinner. The guest list also included network anchors Lester Holt, Brett Baer, and David Muir. Actors Allison Williams, Will Ferrell, Bellamy Young, and Aziz Ansari, and David Letterman. First of all, why are these journalists buddying up at the White House with whoever's in office? That, I don't, I've never understood that, and I think, it's, I think it's ridiculous. You're not there to become part of the story. You're there to tell the story. You're there to hold these politicians feet to the fire. But over and over again, we see these legacy journalists, these legacy media journalists, they want to be part of the story. They think they're just as cool as the people they're covering. Well, newsflash for you, you're not. It was no secret to the entire company that they are a couple. A former DECA employee told me of Cayman and Tui, a perception confirmed by others. 
Though Tui told me she left her job as general counsel in 2007 to open her own law firm, her office remains at DECA's headquarters and DECA is still a client. So obviously, Miss Tui had no problem about the other two ladies moving into the house and I guess that blows my thruple theory right out of the water. So, I, I look, again, I really don't care what consenting adults are doing in their homes, but that had to kind of be an odd situation, right? He had a live-in girlfriend, then he brings in these two other girls. Maureen was included in every meeting with every outside counsel and with every company that invested in DECA, an insider told me. It would appear that Tui was also helping with Avaloop because when Marchenko decided to register the company in New Hampshire, she falsely claimed as her residence the home owned by Tui on Kidder Street in Manchester. Well, how about that? I guess they were pretty close, huh? And I guess the situation at the house wasn't all that odd. If you're going to use Tui's address and act like you guys are super close, well... I'm guessing that there really wasn't too much beef. There wasn't too much static. Did Tui know about the false filing? Tui said she did not, nor did she share the house with Marchenko. This answer is somewhat disingenuous since Tui didn't live in that house either. Was she directed by Cayman to allow Marchenko to use her address for purposes of incorporating Avaloop in New Hampshire? Tui has declined to answer further questions. Of course she has. These people don't believe they owe us anything. They're the ruling class. Let us eat cake. So not only did Marchinko not live on Kidder Street, neither did Tui, who who lives with Cayman according to DECA employees, and an online search seems to confirm that. Carol Kenny, Tui's paralegal, lives in the Kidder Street house. All right, so she... Tui does not live in the house, right? That supposedly uh, Marchenko falsely claimed was her residence. They all live in the house together with Cayman. Oh, except for the paralegal, Carol Kenny, who actually does live in the Kidder house. You folks keeping up here? I mean, geez, Louise. Had Ghislaine Maxwell not been arrested after finding her own refuge in New Hampshire, Marchenko's bit of history in the state might have gone unnoticed. Now... However, speculation has ratcheted up and questions begat more questions. This is a great piece, an absolutely great piece. Epstein was a genius at creating wide-ranging networks and putting influential people in his debt using young women as bait. Yeah, that's saying it mildly. In New Hampshire, the brainy founder of DECA, known for his innovative and life-changing inventions, has links has linked that company to an Epstein associate for no clear reason. The only visible products of their association, aside from DECA employees she may have taught to fly, is Marchenko's self-aggrandizing Instagram post to, f- to a following in the tens of thousands, YouTube videos, and a teasy, cheesy website that even at the time was already woefully out of step with what women in aviation had long been seeking to desexualize the profession and move toward some level of parity. And we see this with Marchenko for sure. She is hypersexualized. She is definitely hypersexualized. And you look at the videos or any of her uh, marketing material, and it's definitely all about that. So, she, according to Christine Negroni, the author of this this article, she is behind the times when it comes to the field of women as pilots in the aviation industry. Now, I most certainly do not know anything about the aviation industry, so I will take Miss Negroni's uh, uh, advice here. Take her, uh, take what she has to say as as fact, because this is what she does. She reports on aviation, and she most certainly would know. That Marchenko found refuge in New Hampshire could very well be the result of an act of beneficence, a hand up from Cayman to a woman emerging from a decade of being both a victim and a victimizer. But when explanations are few and nothing about the story is straightforward, it is no wonder the benefit of the doubt is hard to find. 
And that is absolutely positively correct. I want to give Mar- uh, Marchenko the benefit of the doubt, right? I want to say, man, this, this girl had it real rough. She was abused by Epstein. She was purchased by Epstein. And I can't even imagine what that can do to the psyche of somebody. I will never even begin to try and explore that. But what I will say this, I think that she's had ample time to come forward at this point. And I think that she needs to do that if she wants any sort of slack or any sort of a lesser a lesser sentence than the other core four. If not, then I think she's going to get absolutely and utterly slam dunked right along with the rest of them. And to be honest with you folks, if she's not forthcoming, she probably deserves it. But the thing that I take away from all of this, the thing that I think is going to really catch fire is the fact that Cayman is is located within New Hampshire. His company is in New Hampshire. Marchenko, New Hampshire. And all of a sudden, Ghislaine Maxwell shows up in New Hampshire? That's not a coincidence. There's something deeper there in New Hampshire. There's something that needs to be dug a bit deeper and the ties need to be put together. Because I'll tell you right now, folks, every time we have seen a situation where there has been smoke in this case, inevitably, fire follows quickly on its heels. So we're going to keep an eye on this. We're going to see where this goes. But for me, that is the most interesting takeaway from this whole entire article. The fact that Maxwell happens to end up in New Hampshire where Marchenko has pretty deep ties due to her relationship with Cayman. So I'm interested to see where this goes. I'm interested to see how this mushrooms, but I will tell you this. There most definitely is some there there. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. The link that goes along with this episode will be in the description box. And make sure you check that out. Like I said, there's some videos there and stuff that are pretty interesting. All right, folks, we will be back tomorrow and we will do it all over again. If you're out tonight having fun, enjoying yourself, please do not drink and drive. All right, everybody, I'll talk to you later. Ladies and gentlemen, today's opponents on Man vs. Train. At the crossing, we have Rick, a 175-pound frustrated man who's running late for work. And on the tracks, we have Bull, a million-pound freight train that takes a mile to stop. Let's see who comes out on top. You can't beat a train, so don't try. Stop. Trains can't. Paid for by NHTSA. Whatever you're funny, Peacock's got it exclusively. Bears beats The Office on Peacock. Stream every moment from Dunder Mifflin and explore bonus extras and exclusives. Plus, if you're looking for more classic hits, you can stream every episode of Parks and Recreation, Two and a Half Men, and every season of SNL. In the mood for something brand new? Check out Peacock's original comedies, The Amber Ruffin Show, and Saved by the Bell. Whether you're craving a new binge or familiar fave, you can find tons of comedy hits on Peacock. Get started for free at PeacockTV.com.